Between the terror attack earlier today and more news regarding the investigation into Prime Minister Netanyahu, a lot of unsettling news has been unfolding. Joining me in the studio today is Knesset and Likud party member Sharon Haskel to give us an inside look into today's events and the ongoing criminal investigation. Thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. So uh, my first question for you is, you know, how can we prevent these types of attacks earlier today? You know, we have a terrorist who drove a truck into a group of, of soldiers getting off of a tour bus. Mm -hmm. Look, this uh, kind of attack, firstly, let me open with sending my condolences to the families of the five people who were murdered today. Um, these kinds of attack, it's exactly the same as the attack that happened three weeks ago in Berlin. The goal is the same goal. The means are the same means. It's uh, a terrorist driving a truck, trying to hit as many people as possible, to injure as many people as possible uh, for this uh, uh, one purpose. Uh, and I think during these times, it's these times where um, the international community needs to unite. We all know that we need to fight terror t today. Uh, we need to fight it together by sharing information, uh, by, uh, by uh, sharing intelligence, and by working in cooperation. I think this is one of the, uh, of, um, of the main keys into fighting these individual terror attacks. We know that all of it is being uh, promoted and incited on, on, on media, uh, on social media mainly. And so the only way that we can really fight it is by joining forces together, joining information uh, that leads to these people so that we can prevent it before. So do you think that this, you know, because you mentioned the Berlin attack, do you think that this might change the way certain people see Israel or, or our relationship abroad, or it's more of the same? Unfortunately, I don't believe so. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, it's just that we've been through so many different types of terrorism um, that you, you can find similarities in so many different countries throughout the years. Every time there's a double, double standard towards Israel, um, some People, some media outlets uh, describe it as if it's uh, either less of a value or as if it's not considered a terror attack. I mean, how can you say that the Berlin event is a terror attack and the one that happened today in Israel is not? That is, this is just a, a double standard that some of the international community is applying towards Israel. Um, so I wanted to ask also, you know, we've read reports earlier that the terrorist was named as Fadi al-Kanabil um, uh, by Palestinian media and that he was a released prisoner from Israel. Uh, do you think that this might, you know, affect our prisoner swap relations or, or uh, policy? I'll tell you what, I think um, the situation with the prisoners uh, we know that it's very difficult, almost impossible, to have uh, prisoners from terror activities uh, to be rehabilitated. And specifically, in the, this extreme Muslim community, where you hear this incitement, when he is returning from prison, instead of... Um, you know, if we compare it to other prisoners, where they're ashamed of what they've done, where they have remorse towards what they did if they murdered someone or, or hurt someone in a violent way, they remorse it and they try to, to go into a normal kind of life. But in this kind of community, where they treat them as, as uh, uh, um, you know, as heroes, where they um, go and, and, and they praise them. The minute he returned to his home, he was treated as a hero, uh, being praised, being given money and, and anything that he needs. What kind of rehabilitation would this terrorist have? And this is the major question that we need to ask. How, how to stop this incitement? How to stop this... Uh, uh, this uh, community that, that is embracing those people who are hurting in violent ways, other people treating them as heroes, naming them, uh, naming schools or, or streets after them. One, the, the, the minute I know that the Palestinian Authority and other communities will stop praising these acts, this is the minute when we will be able to see a change, maybe some kind of rehabilitation as well. All right. So I'd like to move on, if I may, to uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu and the uh, 
investigation into alleged graft. Um, reports earlier today uh, revealed that there were alleged dealings between Yediot Achronot publisher Arnon Moses and Netanyahu, whereby Yediot will give Netanyahu more favorable coverage in return for pressures on Sheldon Adelson to close down his competitor, Israel Ayom. Uh, do you think that there is any credibility to these allegations? I'll tell you what. The Prime Minister of Israel is under attack. He's been under attack for the past few years. Um, every week, uh, the, some members, even uh, politicians, uh, some members of the opposition, and some reporters as well, as, you, uh, as we've seen before, even like media outlets, time after time are trying to, to bring up things that eventually uh, either never get investigated or you find that there was no, nothing in there before. Um, and they raise it time after time because they decided that they've given up on the democratic way uh, to fight and win uh, the right wing uh, that is right now in, in government. I mean, the, the way that you need to, to defeat your opponent in a democratic country is through the poll. Go and bring voters who believe in you will vote for you. But when I see posts by politicians or messages by different uh, politicians or media outlets uh, saying that we are going to exhaust this prime minister until he's resigned, then there's a huge question mark over every single allegation that is coming up. Should the police investigate these things? Yes, of course. But to come on national TV and, and say that the Prime Minister is, is corrupt, that uh, they've already sentenced him, uh, that the, uh, this reporter already uh, uh, said what his sentence should be or what happened in this investigation. I'm sorry, but reporters are not uh, police officers. They don't have any experience in, in, in police investigating. Uh, they don't have any uh, experience uh, to be uh, judges or, or understanding these kinds of things. And I tell them to just wait a minute. Just wait. Let the people who are expert in these things to do their job and bring up the truth out. And if the truth is that there was nothing there, similar to many cases that were before, while he was under attack in the last few years, then just give him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, this is the Prime Minister of Israel. So, all right. Well, I think that that's a good point to leave off. And, uh, and thank you so much again for coming. Thank and, you. Yeah.